So today what we're going to be looking at is motion studies. So we have built this, like it's all components. You should have your joints in there. They allow you to like click and drag stuff and see how they move relative to each other. Um, so the next step is to take something like this and then render it out. So um, you guys from a previous semester have, uh, have experience in the animation environment here, um, which is great, but with a file that's set up the way that we have it now, the animation environment actually doesn't help us. So like you can see now that I'm in this window here, I've lost like all my joints that I have set up and it's just like components here. The animation environment, as far as I can tell, just exists so that you can explode stuff um, and then move stuff around like relative to its position within the environment. So I have the option to like click and drag something like this, but if I try and rotate it, it's just going to rotate itself. Um, the animation environment doesn't register that you have joints in place. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at motion studies, which will allow us to have like a final rendered out animation of the way that our components and joints are set up. So I'm going to start off by reverting to my position. The tool that, like, basically the only tool we're going to be using is this motion study tool under assemble here. Um, and there's like a little bit of setup now that I think about it. Um, we're going to be essentially looking at one joint, like animating one joint in this scenario. But you can take a motion study and animate several joints at once. Um, if I look at my assembly here, I know that I just have I just need one driving joint to see all the all the movement that I have built in. Either I can animate this slider to go back and forth, and it's gonna well hopefully create this rotation, or I can control this rotation and it's gonna move the slider. Um, I'm gonna just pick this one here. I find that setting it to zero um, or like a comfortable angle helps kind of understand when you go into the motion study like where you're at, where you want to be, and how to achieve that. So for demonstration's sake, I'm going to use this joint right here as my driving joint in my motion study. So I'm going to pop this open, and this is just the window here. So it took me a little bit of figuring out how to like comfortably use this, but it starts off by prompting you to select a joint to animate. I'm going to click this one that I've set to zero. Um, and it pops it open over into this column here. So you can have multiple joints. Like I think I can shift select and create like multiple animations within one motion study. So if you have like, let's say your toy has like two or three different driving joints that create all the motion, um, you can do it all in one motion study rather than having to overlap them. Um, but for, the, for demonstration's sake, we're just gonna select this one. Um, so the way that this works is that you have, on this axis down here, you have these numbers, um, and these are defined as steps. Um, essentially, this is just time. So from zero to 100 is your length of time. Um, you can have the, the animation loop, but uh, it's not concrete as in zero to 100 seconds. You can like speed it up or slow it down. It's just giving you a frame of reference that this animation is gonna last from zero to 100 and everything that happens within this time frame is going to be the complete animation. Um, and then the this axis right here, it's not really clearly labeled, but if I add a point, let's say at 50, so like halfway at my time, and this is why I set the degrees to zero, is that um, it specifies angle because I have a revolute joint here. If I pick a slider, it's going to specify distance. Um, we'll say 180. So like my halfway point. So it should do a half rotation halfway through. If I hit enter, it's going to move here. So the way that we interpret this is that over time, our joint like starts at zero here, is going to move to 180, and then stay there. So that's what should be happening when you play it. It should be moving from one position to the next over time. If I hit loop, it's going to keep going. And that's basically how you set it up. You can add multiple points on the line. So let's say I want it to do like kind of a reverse halfway through. It's gonna go reverse and then keep looping. So you can have multiple points. It's essentially just indicating the position you wanna achieve over time um, 
with the uh, motion study. Does that make sense so far? Have I lost anyone? Cool. All right, so now that our motion study is set up, we're gonna use this one. I'm gonna unlabel it as old because for whatever reason, the other one's not working. Um, so we'll go with that one. So now that we have that set up, we wanna start, we wanna essentially render out that animation. And this can be a little bit tricky. Um, for whatever reason, the way that Fusion set this up is like makes no sense. Um, and I'll show that, I'll show why in a second. So we're gonna move over to the render environment over here, um, which you guys should have a little bit of experience with. Um, you can see your motion studies over here. Um, you can drag and drop materials, make it happen however you want. If I hit render right here, you would just assume that there's the option to like render out not only like your static image, but any like, let's say they have video options here, um, but let's say like the motion studies. So there's no options to actually like select this. If you like right click, there's no option to, you can't like do anything special with them in the render environment. Um, basically the way to set this up is that you'll need to do a static cloud render first. Um, and this is important. So Fusion will only let you render out video on the cloud. So whether that's like, whether that's an animation that you set up in the animation environment with like an explosion view happening and pieces moving, or if it's a motion study, Fusion will only render it using the cloud render. You can't use the local render for whatever reason. So the way to set this up, and I've already done this, is that I did two different renders. So this first one here, I rendered this locally. So if I open this here, it's just a static image with like, I think custom aspect ratio and like all those settings. Um, nope, okay. So like I have like a couple options here. It shows my static image. Um, there's the option to re-render, which will prop, pop open this dialog again. You can see I just used a one-to-one -one aspect. Um, these settings, you can tweak them, but they kind of determine what settings that your uh, animation will render out as. Um, up here, there's the option to re-render as turntable. The option we're looking for is render as motion study. So if you do a local render, you open up your dummy image here and you don't see render as motion study, it's because you didn't use a cloud render. This second one here is just a static image I rendered using the cloud renderer. And if it opens up, you can see I now have the option to render as motion study here. So if I pop this open, um, it allows me to select which motion study I have. It's not gonna let me select the one that I've already set up because I did this render before I set up that motion study. So it's letting me render this one here because that was my original like kind of test motion study. I did a cloud render in the render environment and then went back and did another one called render here. So because I did this render first, it doesn't have like any registration for whatever reason of any of the other motion studies. So if you create a new motion study, you'll need to go back, do another cloud render of a static image so that it gives you the option to select the motion studies you have set up um, and re-render them as a motion study. Um, but once this option is here, uh, I recommend going pretty low so like this isn't for anything special. Um, I would set it up as standard quality and then go for kind of like the lowest kind of thing um, that it'll let you. So there's all these options here, the same as the drop down options within like the quality that you can render out as, excuse me. Um, but I recommend going something like a really small, I just re recommend going with a really small file size. It'll reduce the amount of credits required to do it because we're forced to use the cloud renderer. Um, but if it's too high and you've been rendering stuff out all day, you'll run out of credits and then won't be able to render it so. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Like if you're trying to render out something, like if you're trying to render this out in like 1080p, it's gonna require a ton of cloud credits that you probably just don't have. Like I haven't rendered anything today and I think I only have like five credits is my default or something like that. Um, so just something to keep in mind. But that's it as far as like taking, a, taking an assembly, adding joints and then animating it is just using that motion study tool. So that's what we're gonna be doing with this example file and then hopefully with your toy before the end of the semester is having a rendered out animation of your toy moving around. Um, that you can 
shout out to employees and stuff. 